welcome back everybody and today it's another clan requested video this time on the russian tier 5 heavy the kv1 now this is a real tank and it is iconic and everybody in blitz should have one well in my opinion because i love this tank i think it's probably the best tier 5 heavy you can lay your paws on however not everybody loves it for some reason mainly because of its armor and the armor is actually misunderstood because it has got amazing armor wouldn't you know how to use it properly now you can see there the armor profile and it looks pretty bland it doesn't look that great it looks mediocre apart from the gun mantlet and that will be true head on or side on this thing is about as thin as a piece of paper but that's not the trick with the kv1 as you can see there, side on, it's just not good really. But I will get to the armor later because it's quirky. This tank has lots of different things going for it. For one, it's got four guns, three of which are level five and one is level six. And they've all got different properties. So if you go for the level six gun, you're gonna have great penetration and you're gonna do really big damage, but it's gonna take you a while to load your gun. Whereas if you go for the next one down, which is a level 5, you're going to have really great reload time, but you're not going to get great penetration. Simple as that. I will show you both guns later. Now, back to this armor. Now, the KV can side scrape, but it's got a trick up its sleeve. It's not your normal side scraping tank. You can't just plonk it straight on at 90 degrees and work. There you'll see, you'll, you'll track it and the armor at the front is very thin. Now, if you turn it about 24 to 25 degrees, however, all of a sudden you become a big red blob. Yes, the front is still penetrable, but you can hide your front. So don't do this, guys. Don't side scrape it head on you will be penetrated. You may deflect a few shots because you're side on, but you're gonna, you're not really utilizing the armor. Now turn it like this, you're keeping your front away from the enemy, you can get shots in, and the whole side of you is now blood red. Much better, and that is the trick with this armor. And it doesn't just work Side scraping, you can do it out in the field. If you angle your tank correctly, shots will bounce, regardless of whether there's a rock or hard cover next to you. Trust me, I will show you some videos later where that is exactly what happens. So this is what you want to be doing. When you're side scraping with this thing, you need to be trying to get your angles at about 24 to 26 degrees. It looks and sounds difficult, but you can see the angle there and after a bit of practice you really will get used to it and don't just believe me go on to armor inspector and play around with it and you will see that the optimal angle for this tank is around 26 degrees how does that look well, it looks like this it, it, it you know this is what the enemy sees it, you can move forwards and backwards your glacier plate is still out exposed but as you can see here you, you really add an oblique angle to, to the building. Now you could go the other way and hide your glacier plate, which would be much better. But anyway, what is it like out in the field? Now, first off, I've put the level five gun on this. It's the top level five gun, and it's got the fastest load time for the KV-1. What you get in reload time, however, you sacrifice in damage, simple as that and we'll see that in a moment now the kv1 is a heavy so it, it's not the fastest tank on the field it's really not it's got a top speed of about 25 and it lumbers along and as long as you understand that it is a bully and it really is a proper heavy bully then you'll have a whale of a time now look at this you're going to do oh you're doing 100 damage 85 damage but your reload is wow it's like three seconds so you can rain damage really quickly upon these tanks. And in, I'm penetrating the Cromwell. Okay, the Cromwell's not got the best armor in the world, but I'm penetrating it pretty easily. I'm not doing massive damage rolls, but I'm doing damage quickly. And it adds up. You know, these 85s, four in a row, really add up 
to massive damage. So already I've only done 400 and something damage. The Cromwell's in trouble. He knows that. I've now got a Leo on my backside. I'm not too concerned. He's not the biggest threat. Funnily enough, um, you know, he's bouncing some, he's getting some, but what he's getting is, is minor hit points. I want the Panzer 3, 4 and the Cromwell. They are my biggest threats, especially the Cromwell. Now, because I've got a fast reload time, I can afford to, to do certain things. So, okay, take out the Cromwell. Now I need to take out the Panzer 3, 4. He's, but I see a tank over there, so I can take him out. And he's well within my penetration range and damage range. Um, the turret's a bit slow. I would love to have got around and snapshotted him, but I can't. So now I'm worried about the Leo behind me because my hit pool's going down because the Panzer 3, 4 is taking more damage than the Leo did. Then I look at the I look at the mini map and I see the Leo still in action. I think he's over by our spawn point or at least by the bridge. So it gives me time to focus on this Panzer 3 without worrying about a Leo coming up my backside. Problem is the Panzer 3 is a bit quicker than me. I'm in a Russian heavy and there is the Leo over there. So he makes a mistake. I'm able to take him out. Now there's only two tanks left. We're in a good position. It's five against two. The Leo's being a nuisance. The T-37 is being covered by the rest of my team. I need to go over there and help them out. Oh. The 37 is going to go very shortly, and the Leo is under the bridge and trying to make a run for it. And who can blame him? Uh, he's got two tanks on him. His teammate is now gone. He's just the last one left. I think he's going down, but he's not. He stays up. Um, well, he goes back up. I can't get the turret around quickly enough. He's a lot quicker than me than he is, but he's still bouncing shots. That enables me to get the turret round finally and put one into him. Now, we took out four enemies, but we only did 700 damage because we've got the low caliber gun. Okay, we got a class three, but in the grand scheme of things, we didn't do particularly well for the KV-1. So what happens if you put the tier six gun in? Well, this gun is a bit of a beast, especially on this tank. It's got a much longer load time. It's now almost eight seconds. But watch this. High roll, 200 alpha. Now the top damage on this is averaging about 200. The VK got a bit aggressive. He's, I mean, I don't know what was going through his mind to stick his nose up like that. But he got punished for it. Now there's two KVs here. There's me and there's my teammate. And we get another good roll, this time on the Type 34. Now. I'm not angling particularly well. He's raining fire down upon me, but hit point trade wise, we're doing okay. I mean, we're rolling 200, and we've got the VK over there. He's bouncing because the angle is better on the VK than it is on the T 34. And together, we're just wiping the floor with these guys. The, t the Type 34 gets ultra aggressive, don't understand why. Now the VK is in trouble and my teammate takes him out. So the two KVs there have taken out two relatively dangerous tanks. We're in a good position. Everybody else is fighting with all the other KVs and the scavengers over there. When all of a sudden an AT2 pops up. Now, this has got good armor, I admit. And it's pretty difficult to penetrate. And the problem with the KV-1 is that it's not the best penetration, to be perfectly frank. It's about 120. Now the AT-2 front on has got pretty good armor. And you need to either get round the back or on the side or take out the cupola. But you'll see in a moment, when you go close, he's pretty difficult to penetrate with a KV-1. And we're both struggling to pen him. And I think we've both got the top gun. Now, if we both go in together, he's going to have a problem. Because now we can pen him. Now he's, he's back to us. Now we've got the, 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 the points where we can actually take him out. And we do okay. We roll about 1,290. 
Not a bad roll in that tank. And we get a third class. That was a lot more damage than the last video, but um, we're, we're the top tank, but we only still got a third class. And that was with more damage. So it's not always about the damage that results in what class you get. We're staying with the big gun, and now we're going to go out on Winter Melikovna. This is actually a really good map. Now, most of the team of the enemy have gone down. Now, we've seen three of them. You can see that on the mini-map. Chances are, most of them are down there. We get a nice roll on the Type 58, and we track him at the same time, and somebody else tracks him, which probably gives us the chime to... Oh, we missed! <laughs> that was a shocker. We could have had him there, but we didn't. We missed. Now we can see a scavenger, we can put one into him, and because my angles are around the 20 odd degrees, I'm bouncing shots from over in the corner. Although, that one I didn't bounce. We've now seen another tank, we can have a pop at him, hopefully do a high alpha roll, which we do, and there we go, we've got a toaster and something else over there, can't really see what it is. Now I know they're there, they're behind that building. They've dropped off the minimap again but they're still there and I think that was the toaster who's just put another one into me yeah it probably is the toaster so he's giving me a hard time I can't get to him it's now a waiting game instead of rushing them oh toaster's up yeah we managed to get him with a good roll toaster's now gone that that's taken a problem out another bad shot don't know where that went I clearly missed the MT25 it's now a waiting game we don't want to rush these. And this is one of the mistakes that people make. You can see where the tanks are. You can see that there are hit points to be had. And all of a sudden, people want to sort of rush in and die. And go back to the garage really quickly. And this is the thing. You've got seven minutes in these games. You, you don't have to win the battle in the first three. You, you can take seven minutes to win them, funnily enough. So if we just bide our time, we get another good roll on the MT. All the red team are now on the minimap. We can see them all. We can have a go at the scavenger. He's gone. We can now move and concentrate on the VK. Hopefully, I will reload in time. Try and get him fired. Didn't manage it, but we get a really good alpha roll. Top alpha again, 210. Maybe we can stick one up his backside. Yes, we do. Another high alpha roll. Their tanks are now whittling down. We took our time. We had patience. Maybe I can out with the MT-25. Maybe he's going to make a dash for it. Who knows? Oh, he's on fire. I'm going to leave him. He's not my kill. Now we've got two VKs left. We've got the VK-30 and the VK-28. Let's get over there and see what we can do. We've still got relatively good hit points. VK's popped up behind. Quite a silly move. I'm not on the minimap. Goodbye, VK. Another VK left to go. We should reload in time to get around this corner. He may be pointing the other way. Maybe we can put him on fire. No, but somebody else shoves a shot in at the same time. And we do 1,500 damage here. Get three kills. We didn't rush. And for our troubles, we get a second class. That was a much better game than the last game. We're not the top tank. That's the AMX. He played really well. But we get rewarded for being patient and picking our targets. So let's switch over to Mirage. This is another map that I actually really enjoy. It, it's got everything going for it. It's, it's, it's got very good variety, good cover, really good bumps and dips, hard cover, soft cover. It, it's a really interesting map. I was under the impression that they'd all go down the heavy route, which is this route. Clearly not. Clearly they've decided on a different tactic. The scavenger there, he's pretty nimble and nifty, so he's going to have a look around the corner, and there you go. There's a B1, and all of a sudden, another one pops on the minimap. I can't really have a go at the B1. I'm a bit stupid. I want to get in a better position. I want to shoot something. The B1, can I have a go? Silly shot by me. I'm not going to get there. But because of my angle look, he can't hit me. Now, I've got a KV220T there, which... I will find hard to pen unless I stick APCR in. We've got two more scavengers. I've got the B1, which I'm going to leave alone. I'm not interested in him. 
I'm more interested in these tanks over here. Here goes the KV-220. I can't pen him. I stick it APCR. Maybe that will pen him. Let's have a go. Ah, I was too late. I missed him. We've not been penned yet. We've had a couple of shots. We've had quite a few shots bounce off us because the angle is, is tight for them. I'm just a big red blob. I'm going to stick with the APCR for the moment. No, I'm going to switch back to the normal AP, get around to this scavenger. He's bounced me again because of my angle. I'm now going to stick one into him and he's gone. The KV-220 is a concern for me. He can penetrate me. I'm going to find it difficult to penetrate him. I'm going to try and get round, see if I can get him onto the side. It's no good me trying to angle up with him at this moment in time. We need to pen him. I'm there, the, and the scavengers are there. Here he comes, sticking the APCR. Now I can pen him. Obviously, however, because it's APCR, the damage values are much lower than the standard ammo. But that's not a problem. Oh, he bounced me right on the front. Oh, that was quite lucky, I thought. He, he must have just hit my upper glacier plate, aiming for the driver, and the scavenger takes him out. So, we're now all even. Stevens, there's three against three. I've got a full hit pool still, even though I've been taking hits. The scavenger, he's still realistically got a full hit pool, and we've got a crusader on effectively a full hit pool. But again, those angles are making him bounce, which is what I love about the KV-1. If you stick it's in the right angle, even when you're not by hard cover, you will bounce shots. It's as simple as that. The scavenger on the opposite team and the Leo, they've got reasonable hit pools left. There's just two of us left now, myself and the scavenger. The Leo's gonna find it difficult. I've angled up, he's not penetrating me realistically. The scavenger took, me out, took him out. We've got one tank left. My scavenger unfortunately just had a, a fire, but he's obviously got the instant fire extinguisher. And happy days, we win. And that was a really good game. It was intense. We bounced a lot of shots. It's a shame we didn't finish with a full hit pool, but hey, it's never going to happen. We did only 1,400. We're a steel wall because we bounced so much. And we get another second class. So. I know everybody's out there saying, oh, there's no mastery, there's no seven kills. I did explain, though, in one of my earlier videos that I'm an average player, guys, and this is to show average players how to play. This is not to show you how to get an ace. It's not to show you how to get a seven kill streak. It's to show you how to realistically play a tank in a game so you optimize it. Here we are on Immelsdorf. It's a corridor thing, and we've already taken out a Valentine. It was a pretty easy kill. Somebody else has already taken all his hit points away, effectively. We know that most of the Reds, if you look at the minimap, are all bunched up around there. Oh, a scavenger's just popped. I can probably have a dig at him. His armor, his turret's exposed. It's, it's actually a, a, a bouncy turret, but when you angle it that way, it's not that bouncy, I'm afraid. Now it's bouncy, but he's going to turn it and allow me to take another pop at him. He thinks he's safe down there. Realistically, he's not. Now, we're losing tanks. We're not in a good position here. We're three down, they're two down. Oh, Panzer three, four. If I angle, um, he's gonna bounce me. He's gonna have a pop at me now. I'm gonna have a pop at him. He takes some out of me. I take some out of him. I'm trying to get the angles narrowed. Oh, another tank has a go. We get rid of him. The chaffy is giving me a world of pain. I'm trying to get the angles right. He's set my engine on fire. I haven't got an automatic. Oh, it's all going wrong. But all of a sudden, we're down to three against two. What happened there? The chaffy trying to get his engine on fire. Oh, load time is just too much. I'm trying to get the angles right. I know he's going to pop there. I can hurt him. I'd love to take him out, but I'm on a long reload. I've got to try an angle. I've got a DW2. My angle is too good for him. He's going to bounce. I still want one of these. Oh, the DW2 is going to stick his nose out. He's going to be punished for that. Now I want the Chaffee. He's the one who hurt me the most. But I can't get him because somebody else got him for me. Now that was a more intense battle. 
And you can see there, we did 1,700 damage. We got another second class. And this is the thing about the KV-1. It's a bully. In a brawl, it can hold its own, as long as you get those angles up. It's not got the fastest turret turn. It's not got the fastest turn circle. But it does have very good armor if you know how to angle it. Angled, nobody will penetrate you. They will bounce all the shots. You stick your front nose out too far and they can penetrate. You get the angle wrong, they can penetrate. Your load time with the big gun is longer, but you're taking 200 alpha. I love this tank. This tank is a pleasure to go out on the battlefield in. I mean, you see that. I mean, I've just blocked uh, almost 180 damage. It's, it's a lovely tank. And I suggest you, you, you take it out for a whiz. You, you practice your angles. You see what you can do. You try your best. See, if you stick your nose out, you're just going to get hurt. You, you, you just practice the angles. Practice angling this tank. Practice getting everything sorted out. And your gameplay on the KV-1 will improve no end. And you will fall in love with it like me. I mean, I do absolutely love this tank. And I'm carrying a win rate of about 68% in it. Okay, that's not massive. But it is for an average player. And this is the thing about this tank. You can have really good fun in it. You can cause a lot of damage. If you get your angles right, nobody can hurt you. And you too can get your win rates up. And you'll love it. Anyway, that's enough from me and it's enough from the KV-1. I hope this video's been a bit of use. Um, okay, I'm not super duper Unicum. I'm not the best player at the KV-1, not by a long shot. But I love playing this tank. And if you've had problems with it or you're, it's not, you know, one of your favorites, give it another go. It's underestimated by some people, overestimated by others. It's not an OP tank, not by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a pleasure to drive. Anyway, guys, until the next video, I hope you enjoy yourselves and you have some happy tanking. And if you really want, by all means, send in requests. Tell me what you'd like to see and I'd be more than happy to accommodate. Until then, bye for now. Hey, I've been Fuji and you've been great. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. And I'd love if you would press subscribe. Who knows, we can do some more. By all means, drop me comments, tell me what can be improved and tell me what you'd like to see. I really love to know. Anyway, until the next time guys, happy tanking.